Doug Henwood, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. <laughs> Dear, good to be here uh, from a distance. Yes, yes, indeed. And it's, it's a perfect time for you to be here. You have really established yourself as somebody who is not just aware of the market and participates in the market, but also calls Wall Street out for what it really is. The biggest story right now is GameStop, Wall Street, hedge funds, and just a lot of money that is nowhere and yet everywhere. In the shortest way possible, how would you break this down to somebody who had no idea what was going on? Most people, most civilians who don't really know the markets very well, have the sense that it's all a big racket, kind of ludicrous, not that different from the casino. Like all this image that Wall Street likes to cultivate about itself, that it's rational and it's allocating capital efficiency and all that, efficiently and all that. It's just nonsense. It's not doing any of those things. It does a little of it, but mostly it's just a, a, a game to try to outwit your competitors, people on the other side of a trade, whatever, uh, and uh, run away with the most money. It's just, uh, there, there's nothing terribly rational. It's driven by emotions and psychology and fear. And in most recently, over the last uh, year or so, by a gusher of something like $3 trillion in Federal Reserve money, which has uh, been powering the market. So it's um, that sense that a lot of people have that uh, this is all a bit of a racket. It's completely accurate. So it seems like, like you're saying, it's like basically people came into the casino and said, we're going to play against the house and we're going to make a lot of money. What's interesting here is a market that is oftentimes termed free and capitalistic has now been stopped. Can you explain that element? Why, why, was, the, why was it stopped? Have these people broken the rules? Have they, have they done anything wrong? Well, I think there are a couple of things going on. One is, you know, these Redditors, they're just the wrong kind of people, but they're playing the same game that Wall Street does. And when they're, they're um, getting together, talking up a stock, talking down a stock, trying to figure out the other guy's positions, looking who's weak, attacking them. Uh, they do, Wall Street professionals do this sort of thing all the time. Um, and I, I think it's very funny to hear their professions of outrage that uh, this is just not moral, you know, it's not fair. It's like the markets are, uh, you know, supposed to be, you know, on the up and up and these guys are not playing fair. That's just utter nonsense. Uh, they're just the wrong kind of people. But I think the other thing is, yeah, they just um, are trying to protect their own. Uh, and um, oh, uh, Robin Hood, although likes to present itself as the you know, democratic uh, institution, uh, the democratic broker for the masses are going to overturn the Wall Street order, uh, it's deeply plugged into the Wall Street establishment. Um, that's how they make their money. They feed their orders to um, established brokers uh, who then uh, make money on those trades by taking a little, a little bit of the price. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I think they're, uh, they are trying to make an orderly market, but they're also trying to uh, um, keep the fences up, to make sure the rabble can't uh, crash the party. So then two questions. One, what does this tell us about Wall Street and, and the market? And two, what do we do to improve this? Because it, it feels like an unfair system. Well, it is an unfair system. Uh, it's a deeply unfair system. And uh, one of the things that make me suspicious about all this talk of democratizing the stock market is that you know, the distribution of income and wealth is very undemocratic. And there's nothing that you can do it by, uh, to, to, that nothing that a, a trading platform can do to change any of that. I mean, the fundamentals of a society are not going to change because uh, some people in Reddit got to play uh, in the stock market. Um, but um, what does it tell you about Wall Street? It is um, largely... Um, of little economic significance. The standard story is that the stock market exists to raise money for productive corporations to invest in you know, capital equipment, you know, buildings, mm -hmm. machinery, hire people, do R&D. It does almost none of that. Um, the, the market really is more about extracting um, value from companies uh, for shareholders. It's, um, it really is a, a machine for extracting value uh, for, for the, the top 1% of society. Uh, the ownership of stocks is extremely concentrated. Something like 95% of all stocks are owned by the richest 5%. Um, and, you know, a few guys on Reddit are really not going to change that fundamental fact. So for those people who are on Reddit, you know, for the people who came in because they liked that, um, you know, that GameStop got a new CEO, you know, those people who, who actually wanted to invest, the people who said, I believe in the future or screw the, the, the hedge funds, what position are they in now? I mean, are they at risk of losing a lot of money now? Or are they in a position where they've made so much from the initial investment that if they get out, they're generally going to be fine? Yeah, I think you're going to exit a position. You just can't start a new one, um, which, you know, is somewhat reasonable. Okay. Um, but, you know, I think some, pe some people are going to really lose a lot of money. If people um, who are sensible enough uh, sold into this rally, you know, if you bought it at 50 or 100 and sold at 300 or 350, you're doing pretty nicely. 
Um, but you know, I was just looking at the the uh, the, the chart for trading in, in GameStop today. It was you know went from something like 350 to 150. You know during the course of the day, it's been an utterly crazy wild ride. None of it make, none of it making much sense at all. Um, now I think a lot of people. However, are going to hold on to their positions, hoping that well, if it went to three hundred and fifty, it can go to a thousand. Uh, on Twitter today, somebody said to me four thousand with you know eight or ten rocket emojis afterwards. Uh, <laughs> this is the nature of bubbles. You know, this the larger issue here is that the entire stock market is in an epic bubble. I mean, it really right. one of the great bubbles of all time. Uh, the the market has only been valued this highly at a couple of previous times in history. Uh, um, 2000 at the peak of the dot com bubble and 1929 before the great crash. So, you know, we're in some really crazy territory. And things like this are a sign that uh, maybe things are just a little frothy. But, you know, I think there is that sense that when um, people uh, get, uh, people who are new to the market get this deeply involved, it's a mm -hmm. kind of a sign that things are, 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 uh, are, are ripening, shall we say. Um, there's a saying on Wall Street that a bear market is when money returns to its rightful owners. And, huh. uh, I think uh, we, you know, I don't know what's going to set off that bear market. Because, oh, you know, bubbles always go further than you think they could. There's certainly no rationality to this at all. But at some point, somebody's going to be le left holding a very depleted bag. Before I let you go, does the person who is holding the depleted bag determine how the situation is dealt with? So if the big players on Wall Street, if they're the ones holding the depleted bag, is it going to be dealt with differently from the government versus if, like, the people on the ground are holding the depleted bag? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing right now that we can see that would require any kind of government bailout. You know, a couple of hedge funds may blow up, but nobody cares. There's no systemic risk around that. You know, much the worse for them. But, um, you know, I think if some Wall Street people left, uh, let, let, are left holding the bag, there may be some bailout. If, you know, larger entities than just a few hedge funds run into trouble, we'll have a government bailout. That's always what happens. You know, Wall Street's quite, a, quite an amazing game. Um, they, there is always this, uh, every, I don't know, 10, 15 years, they seem to run into a wall and the government bails them out. So, you know, they learn um, uh, that uh, they can get away with anything. Uh, there's this famous story about Sonny Barger, the old hell's angel who uh, woke up from a coma after a motorcycle accident. Uh, and uh, the, the, the nurse said to him, well, I hope you learned your lesson, Mr. Barger. He said, yes, I did. And she said, what's that? And he said, I can do anything and survive. <laughs> I think that's the attitude that uh, Wall Street cultivates. They can do anything and survive. Um, the only thing that would really change anything is if there was enough popular outrage that said, we really need to regulate this casino seriously. We didn't really have that serious a set of reforms after the 2008 financial crisis. Right. You know, all right, but not serious. It was not like the reforms that happened after 29 to 32. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe if we see some kind of very serious smash up, uh, we might finally uh, wake up and have some kind of uh, regulation of this, of this insanity. Doug Henwood, thank you so much for joining us on the show. I hope to see you again. Uh, anytime. Thanks.